Welcome back, scholars. We are still talking about circuits. Yes, and we'll go light some stuff up today. Remember, we've got our lights. And remember, circuit is a complete path around which an electrical current can flow. So it's got to be a complete path. When it's open, it's broken, but when it's closed, it flows. And by it, we mean the electrical, the energy, the electrical energy that we're talking about. So remember, if I take my light bulb here, I can add as many conductors as I want as long as the metal portions are touching. So I'm going to connect this metal to that metal right there. And then we're going to take our energy source, because you always have to have an energy source, this battery, and then it has to touch both ends of the battery. Remember, a battery has a positive end and a negative end, and if you just rotate a battery around, you can see where the positive or negative end. It doesn't matter what side touches what, but it has to touch both sides. And when we have a complete circuit, meaning that we touch both sides, watch my light bulb. When it's closed, it's closed. When it's open, it's broken. When it's closed, it flows. This is a circuit. This is the reason our remotes work. This is a reason that our batteries work. Every battery you see, even car batteries, you're going to notice they have two prongs, positive and an uh, a negative. And that electric circuit has to be closed to both of those ends in order for electricity to flow. Off, on, off, on, off, on. And as that electricity flows, there's actually two kinds of circuits that we use, or two main kinds. We have a parallel circuit and a series circuit. So let's say that I have two light bulbs and I want both of them to work, right? So I can connect them into one series, one circuit, where I'm actually connecting these together you see that right there and then I can bring in my battery and I can do the exact same thing so I'm going to touch it to one end and I'm going to touch it to the other end I want you to watch what happens there we go now look it's just a little bit that's lit up it's not as bright as it was when I just had one light bulb why do you think that that is why do you think that whenever I added an extra light the 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 luminous, the, the, the shining, how bright it was, it began to decrease. Why do you think that that is? Okay, That's something that we'll be looking at and thinking about later because this, this phenomenon is the reason that we have parallel circuits because we needed a way to fix this problem. This is actually a problem. Think about it. When I had one light and it was pulling from this battery, this battery only had to light one object, right? But whenever I combined another object, not only did I increase the, the distance that it was traveling, but I've also put it in a position where now it has to provide electrical energy to two objects back to back. So they're back to back and I've got to get them both lit up and, and that is the, the downfall to a series circuit. Now here's the other part. So if I have this circuit and I have it together like this, a series circuit, and I touch one end to my battery and I touch my other end to my battery, I'm going to notice that they're both lit up. Well, not now because they're not touching. There we go. Okay, so we can get our lights back on. Alright, there we go. They're barely lit up, if you can see them. See that one and that one. They are barely lit up. Now here's the problem. If I take this middle section apart, guess what happens to both of the lights? Or if I take one side off, actually. Both of the lights turn off. Both of the lights turn off. So in a series circuit, when it's open for one object, it's open for all the objects. So now we're closed. You see my energy? But when I open it, they both turn off closed both of them are on when I open it both of them are off so in a series circuit when the circuit is open the circuit is done like there's there's no more flow of electrical energy that's it that's all that you got so in a series circuit no matter how many objects you have in a row if anything happens to anywhere along that path boom it's over now I'm going to introduce another part to a circuit today, something that you've seen, something that you've used, something that we've all used. So once again, we're going to take our battery, we're going to stick it in our battery holder, and we're going to introduce this. This is called a switch. 
Now, a switch is exactly what it sounds like. You know, a light switch, how you flip it on and you flip it off, you flip it on and you flip it off. What I'm about to demonstrate is exactly what happens in our houses when we flip a light switch on and off and on and off and on and off, or any switch actually. When we turn on our toy cars, on and off and on and off. When we turn on anything that has an on and off switch, it uses this same basic technology. Now, a switch has a, a metal bar a bar that's going to be made, a conductor, a bar that's going to be made out of a material that conducts electrical and thermal energy and you can push it up and you can push it down. You can push it up and you can push it down. So let's start creating our circuits. I'm going to start at my battery terminal and I'm going to click it there. Then I'm going to start at my other battery terminal and I'm going to click it there. Now I told you every part has to be connected in the battery terminal. So the next thing we're going to do is I have to connect right here because I should be able to draw a line around with my finger showing where all the energy flows. The energy should be able to flow non-stop, 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 okay? And then the next thing we're going to do is this time we're actually going to create a circuit that produces sound energy, okay? So I'm going to take this, I'm going to stick it right here get it in there but I'm gonna do it down here and then I'll lift it up for you guys to see come on come on come on come on do you want me to sing to you while I'm doing it so that it's very poetic noisy things of that nature okay and then I'm gonna connect right here all right so now we look at this and what we have is we have an almost completely closed circuit. So we have our energy starts here and it's gonna flow, it's gonna flow, it's gonna flow, it's gonna flow, it's gonna flow. And then right here it's flowing but because it's not connected, the circuit is open. And remember when it's open, what is it? It's broken. So what a switch allows us to do is if I take this switch and I push it back and make the two conductors touch, it allows the energy to flow and I don't know if you can hear that but it's making like a little sound because that's what it does now we're producing sound energy as well when it's open it stops when it's closed it flows when it's open it stops when it's closed it flows and so now we know from our circuits that we can produce light energy but we can also produce sound energy whenever we connect it to a speaker. Now just think about it. Think about all the things that we use that convert electrical energy into sound energy. Our cell phones, our TVs, like there's so many devices, our Playstations, our Xboxes, whatever device you use, it has the ability to transfer, to change, to convert this electrical energy into sound, into light, and into all other different kinds of energy. So that's our circuit for today. Remember that a circuit is a complete path around which electricity can flow. Remember that when it's open, it's broken, but when it's closed, it flows. And circuits will have a battery. Circuits will have a wire that is made of conductors and insulators. And we can also use a switch to open and close the flow of an energy. We can use a switch to open and close the flow of electrical energy. So that's a circuit. That is a circuit, and we use circuits everywhere. I hope that you've enjoyed another episode of Amazing Science, because science is amazing, but it's not as amazing as you are. Now, the next time we get on here, we're actually going to show you how circuits can make mechanical energy as well, and then the next one will be the Great Circuit Challenge. Yes, it will be the Great Circuit Challenge. Oh, also, remember, we also talked about a series circuit. A series circuit is a circuit that has multiple items in it, but it's in one path. All of the items are in one path. All of the items are in one path. And with a series circuit, if it's open, it's still broken, and it'll only flow if it is closed. All right, scientists, have an absolutely wonderful day, and we'll be back on soon with more amazing science.